So this past week, I gave an assignment to my students. Uh, I sent them a, uh, a series of photographs of something I was working on so they could see the beginning phase and the second day or the second hours and the third and the fourth, you know, and right up to uh, eight uh, shots. And I'm going to send those to you today. And then what I'm doing is asking these guys What I'm doing is asking these guys, my students, uh, to set up something relatively simple in their house. In these days when they're not in the studios, obviously I'm doing this. Uh, and I'm going to, and, I'm, and I'm, then I'm asking them to shoot shots of it every so often. And I'm trying to have them establish definitive stages and success at definitive stages. And I'm going to try to explain those to you. Uh, it's very easy to miss... Uh, understand what's happening in painting. There's there's so many different or, or a number of different elements at once, right? And I'm talking about now for the evolution of a student, but you have to be able to separate the difference between content, visual content, the content of the visual world, and a method, right? And a methodology. And uh, so the method I'm showing you, I'm you can call it mine if you want. I don't care. But the point is, it's rather like the, what the Boston School does in a way of working that was very common back in the 19th century, turn of the last century. And into the and into the twentieth century, and uh, but uh, so if any of you want to follow along uh, from the shots I'm giving you here and make an attempt to do the same thing, I'm going to try to make an offer to 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 do what I'm doing with this critique of Norma. Uh, Norma's only done the very first pass, right? She's just done the color portion, so it's not going to be really exhaustive. But what's going to take the time is for me to explain to you in the first instance here what I'm doing. And I'm not doing it with, with, with um, words, so you're going to have to pay attention uh, if you want to get it. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so let's get right on with it. So let's look at these paintings here. This is a figure I'm working on. And I was working on it for a particular event. Uh, and, uh, and I'm working on it for a number of reasons. First of all, I don't have... In the course of my history, I haven't had enough reason to do figure paintings. And, uh, but, but in my studio, we teach figure, and we had the opportunity to use this really uh, nice 19th century style uh, uh, model. And, uh, and uh, so I took the opportunity myself in a separate occasion to use her uh, just for the purpose of, of showing this way of working. And I, so this way of working, remember, is this full-color thought thing. You know, it's the, something out of Monet. And yet it isn't without drawing, right? So it's not like we're sitting there pecking around. We're actually bringing all the horses at once, right from the very beginning, and we are, and we are. Um, uh, so you're going to see there's there's going to be form, there's going to be drawing of shape, there's going to be silhouette, edge making, uh, and we're doing a figure. So you're going to have proportions and all those things all going on right at the very beginning, and what you're going to see at the end of this. Of these eight shots that I'm showing you now is what I would call a successful start. Now, I try to separate start from finish. Uh, if you can't set up a painting, if you, can set up the, if you can't set up these things that are big in a painting, you won't be able to follow through and do the smaller passages uh, with any kind of success in our way of working, right? So you have to think really big and you have to stay out of any little things that are going to suck you in and cause you not to be able to get this done in an efficient way. I try to lay in canvases in one day. This wasn't done in one day, so I'm not going to pretend that it was. But I try to send it, send anything I work on, I try to set it up in one day. But uh, I was a little more painstaking. In demonstrations, I often am more painstaking because I want you to be able to, to hear and I want to be able to show carefully steps and sort of my expectations at different steps. So. Okay, so let me, uh, without further uh, messing around, just simply talk about this stuff, this, this, this start, okay? Um, the first three images are done with my phone. When I realized I ought to do this, I started shooting images. The first three images are so bad, I finally had somebody else come in and shoot the rest of them. So I want you to understand that when I'm at the very beginning here in this first shot, I'm actually hitting color notes that aren't any different. These are the color notes that you see over here. So th don't think I worked vaguely and very pale and all that sort of thing. Uh, so understand that the notes you're seeing over here would that I had had a decent camera or some ability to use the phone I have <laughs> to shoot it. 
and have these notes, but try to get your head around making sure you see that I'm actually match. Make these notes really do are pretty close to a match. Now the the notes always do improve as you're moving along. They get better and they fill up more space over time. But I'm gonna just explain a few things that are very that need to be very clear in just this section right here. The first one is I I work from the lights to the darks. My theory is you draw with the darks and you and you since you paint wet into wet, you have to have lights down there first, right? But the second reason I try to do it is because I, when I have a very light passage, like, like the body here on the fourth frame, you, it's very tempting to paint that too light, to actually make it pasty white, and you lose all the color possibilities. So that's, that's the chance you have to use that white canvas to make this note less than white, or in other words, darker than white, at which point you're going to get real nice color. That's one of the nice things you're looking for. How dark do I have to get with this light for it to look like it has color quality? And if it doesn't have color quality, it's not going to do all the things that nature does. Okay, so don't think you're going to get away with all this stuff being white, making a white figure. Now remember, we're also like Monet. Now we're just spotting colors around. So we're looking for the most chromatic note. We're looking for the darkest darks, um, the lightest lights. And when we say lightest lights, we do mean this by mass. We don't mean it by highlights, although that can come into play at times. And you're always aware of the, of, of, you know, what that might mean. And I even set them in from time to time and look at them in the in the context. So give them context, um, put them side by side, put them right into the painting. Um, but so you can see I've made, there's, there's a green down here and some other spots of green. Uh, there are other kinds of notes that have green in them scattered around. The background is lighter on one side. This gives you another shot of it. Um, uh, it's a middle value. Uh, but there's this range, right? And in each one of these cases, I'm trying to get the color right to the value. And the, uh, of course, the values right to each other. So uh, I hope that's clear enough what I'm doing there. And I, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing this, there's a color here, there might be a color here, but I'm really looking to see what the movement is, the great long sweep of this color at the beginning, because I really need this note, if you understand what I'm saying. And yeah, you can see when you get over to here, this note is gold here, it's red here, it's gold here, and then it goes back to a more purple red, in fact, down through here. And that actually is the, the you can still, it still rather looks like one note, so to speak. You easily get deceived when you look at nature, thinking it's, you either think it's very complex or you think it's many notes. I mean, or, or you think it's one note, and it's neither, it's both, rather. <laughs> so, uh, having said these notes, I, I worked long enough to see that it looks like it's going to be the color scheme, and I wish that I could show you these notes as these notes, because I wouldn't have started unless I looked more like this, okay? And at that point, I begin to test the color notes, right? And this would be your job if you're going to do this. Get these colors out there and show yourself this shot and say, yeah, and you shoot it even side by side with whatever you're working on so you can say, I can see that I have related the notes reasonably rightly. The relationship of the notes is all I care about, by the way. It's all you care about, not the fact of any note. Side size will not help you in any way. So uh, don't even think about that. It's gone, right? If you're going to work as a Boston School painter, you're out of sight size. There's no note that matches any other note. It's the note to the note within the thing that matches that's correct and accurate. So uh, as I was saying before, if you have this gray, this this what I'm going to call a gray, and this gray here, this is the redder one. That's what has to be accurate and the relative amount of chroma between the two, right? And the slightly relative different darkness is, is all that's all that sort of thing is important. All right, so what you see me then doing is trying to, and these are sort of roughly placed, right? I don't, this one here is actually roughly placed, and you can see later on it's actually showing up as something. I, I'm not really working on the on the uh, exits yet, although um, uh, it's, it's, an early, it's, early, it's early on my agenda, so I do set notes around there where I think the ex exits might be, exits are where the dark meets a light and it goes out of a picture. And uh, we have a whole uh, video on that. Okay, so what I'm looking for now is to locate the painting in the frame. I'm picking the top and bottom locations of some major mass. And in this case, it's the light of the figure. You can see when you get further developed, you can see when you glance over to here that that's a pretty, that's the longest line in this picture, the longest disc length in this picture. So isolating that and doing this, you can see the importance of that. And there's also an importance in trying to get it located left and right, which is why you don't just do the top, but you come down the side a little bit with that mark. And you're trying to articulate the look of nature. And I have a suspicion in these things here, it was pretty darn close to what you're seeing there. And I'm so sorry, I can't show you that. Uh, but I, I'm not doing these things in some vague way 
out of color value is, that doesn't look like this. So, um, uh, and when you get to the toe, it's the same thing. You, you're looking for whatever data you can use down there. In this case, I, it looks like I resolved that it had to be maybe this plus that to help me to see where the location was going to be uh, for the low point from the, of the top and bottom, right? But I'm also trying to resolve the location this way. And that's where you need to learn to uh, find the equilibrium. Uh, there is a, as it were, a, if we dropped a plum right through the middle of this, of this thing here, notice where I am. If you dropped a plum right through the middle of that, the feeling should be that this balance is this, right? The total mass balance is this. If you were to hang a plum, you can do that physically with your model, okay? Experiment with that, surprise yourself. Um, at any rate, that's, that's roughly the equivalent of what you see when you see an ang with a line down the middle of it. Now, that's not what he's doing, but that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's not what he's doing it for, but, uh, but so at any rate, so I'm trying to locate this thing so, so that when I get enough of these marks around, like here, I can begin to feel whether it's in, uh, you know, by the time it's covered for sure, I want to be able to feel that it's, equi it's in equilibrium. You want to be good at this, actually, in our, in our field. When you're painting, you know, a, a framed unit, in other words, you're looking through a viewfinder, and there it is, you get the cropping right, you get the spotting right of the, of the major abstractions so that it feels like it's in balance, and you better darn well be good at getting that, okay? Which is what's so important about getting the exits. By the time you get, uh, you know, these, these exits here, all these things are contributing. This one here, by the way, and now I know that that's there. It's the getting, it, the toe isn't a very good lineup, but this thing lines up with the toe and therefore it helps you to make a decision about the location of this, which is a very st strong one. Anyway, so you're locating left things, a single left thing, right? Because that's gonna be your organizing point. This will be the primary one. You're gonna say, I'm gonna live with that one. And then you're trying to work these in some relationship to it. So you can say, let that be the point that won't change. Okay, we'll call that the anchor left and right. Top and bottom is anchoring to top and bottom at once. You place them as at the right distance from the top and the right distance from the bottom to please yourself. Okay. Okay. And so the rest of this is just going rather slowly. Oh, I apologize. So the first thing you're doing when you bring these two together is you're trying to get that light effect, the color combinations to look right so it feels like the look of nature. And again, that isn't a sight size thing. You're going to make it as like as you can to look at nature, but then you're going to be working on some other effect. It might be this one or some other ones. And you're going to get the, this to look like nature and this to look like nature and, then to, and those two effects to be right to each other, which is the truth that you're looking for. Okay. So, um, so, and it does look like I was looking at this, this, this as for effect purposes, right? And these are way out. You'll see there's a gradually going to come in. Now, I have followed the model of making the lights too big, finding these effects way out here and planning to draw them two and three times or more. And so they, and to, to put them in the right place. We definitely work from the outside in, by the way, for all those people who are thinking that's what this is. You're right. The top and bottom is the outside. And then you're going to this and you're looking for whatever you can deal with spatially. And you can see by the time I get over to here, I'm really interested in this thing here and as it relates to this and the top and the bottom and other things. You see what I'm saying? Even in the figure itself, it's something that reads here, something that reads here. Do you see my marker? And uh, that width going right to this height. Okay. So I'm testing the color values where they meet. If they don't do the right thing where they meet, you have to correct that original notes, okay? And you have to then do this with the edge. You cannot tell what's happening with the color values if you don't make the edge quality right. They won't, you'll think you have the light effect and you won't have it. Or you'll exaggerate the values difference because if you make this too, sharp, too soft because it won't project like it does when it's the proper sharpness. Though this seems complex, it really isn't. The world we're in is one of effects and uh, it's color, and then it's effects, and it has this little slow motion thing of beginning the start of the drawing, right? Which is that we call the floating line or the floating points, right? So you're doing points and getting the angle right. Point, point, and get the angle right. Sometimes you get lucky enough that something up here actually plums with something that's really nice, and when it doesn't plumb, you gotta be good at the, how the angle is just out of plumb, etc. Okay, now I hope that's getting to be clear, but you can see that in Step three. So this 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 whole thing. Why am I why am I doing what I'm doing here? Right. You see that I'm 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 looking for a location place right here. This is also an effect, but this is a good thing that plums in some rather way with this. Not plums, but that's a pretty important angle. It's a very important location this way. The, the importance of this turning a corner. It gives you a point for working this way, but it gives you a measuring point this way. And we know that halfway on on the figure. I say we know. But you don't do it on knowledge, you look at it. But but that's rather near halfway, that point right there is. And uh, 
But in any case, we're trying to get this because it's useful in multiple ways. And the one bigger one I think I was using it for was to get this. It was a strong effect, so I was trying to get it right to this. As possibly something that... And by the way, let yourself go around find that. If, you, if something doesn't work out and give you the information you want, go ask somebody else for it. You know, put some other data out there and look at it. You know, let something else, maybe that'll show you. Maybe that'll give you what you're looking for. But I hope you can see that what I'm doing is just spotting effects around. And this takes some patience, but it doesn't take any brilliance. It just takes the patience that's required is you put it down, you get it in the wrong place, and you move it till it feels right by angle, say to that. The nice thing with the anchors is you know there's a top and a bottom and you fix those locations. And you know there's one left and right place and you fix that. And so you really have a nice, you're not just being dragged around kicking and screaming. You actually know exactly where your top and bottom are and where your left point anchors or your right, depending on what the picture is doing. Uh, all right. So you can see that I'm actually expanding out the, the, the colors here. I'm, uh, uh, I follow the model of whenever I bring uh, a dark to a light of actually articulating the look of nature at that spot. And I try to avoid doing it otherwise. So it's not a precise one in the carefully noodled way, but it's a, it's a largely expressed one. You know, it's expressed broadly. Uh, but you can see what I'm talking about here, I think, as you get along. And so I'm trying to get the canvas covered and, uh, and uh, watching the grand color scheme, watching this value to this, this color to this color and all. If I see a gray up here, Paxton says, if you see a, a value, you can look around to see where else you see it, right? Uh, if you have a color in your brush, use it wherever else you see it. But this is a full color thing. And I, I'm so frustrated. This isn't, these colors don't show because they were here all the way along. I hit those color notes very precisely. Uh, maybe what I should have done is erased a bunch of stuff out of here. Not that I have the skills to do that on the videos. Um, okay, and so you can see that I've explored the locations of things this way. This is a very important uh, 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 exit. Uh, this isn't an unimportant one. It's not a strong one, but it's, it's there. This one's very important exit. This has some importance, and I'm working on this one. Uh, uh, so I don't know what else I can say, except you just pick up what you can from this as you go along. I'm, you can see that I'm working with form. All the elements that we know about, from form to gesture to proportions, all these things, as well as color values and, uh, and uh, you know, the elements of that, you know, chroma hue and, and all that stuff. Uh, all these things are happening at once, but if you manage them one point at a time and know exactly what you're doing there and why, you're there. This will work out just fine for you, but you have to. It does take some patience. Uh, you, you know, it's called suspending your disbelief. I think uh, that'll work out. Um, uh, that's a good exit now. By the time you get down to here, that's a that's a nicely placed one. Now this thing here, when you find an exit like that, you've got to be dead right about the angle to something, right? Or the several angles that are out there already. But this one is the one that's set, right? So everything has to be right to that one. Every time you do anything, if this one's set, if you believe in that one, and you need to set one and try to believe in it, at some point, by the time you get the canvas covered, you may find that you have to move something. It doesn't, it's not unusual that, for that to be the case. Uh, in fact, to move several things, but you then have to, don't get an attitude, you just have to gently move them and do it systematically. When you have a wet canvas, you can move lights into darks. So you really want to have moved major effects and put them in their right places on the first day and be confident about them, which means you really got to get the canvas covered as best you can. And, uh, and you really have to have done good exploring. Let's go back up to these. You have to have done really good exploring of the relationships of, of whatever points you're putting out there and make sure that the widths are right to the heights and the angles are right to vertical and all those things, right? And if you're going to be unsafe, be in an area like this and be, have this too far out, right? You see how this looks massively too big compared to this? Well, of course it is. I'm just studying the effects of my colors here right now. I'm just studying to see if the colors are right when they have the effects of the edge. All right. So, and, and again, these all these shots here are different. This, these colors haven't changed. I haven't gone to cooler, grayer. I think maybe this one and this one are the most alike what the painting looks like. Uh, now, at no point during this painting are you thinking about, you ever saying the name of anything, not a muscle, I don't even say the names of colors. You just simply are watching the big impression and doing that thing which you think will help you the most in evolving the relationships of things, right? 
So, um, yeah, maybe I should just leave it at that for now. I will say this, if anybody wants this, I'm thinking of charging some unimportant amount of money uh, or maybe even just taking a donation if you'd like uh, for me to give you what I've given to my students. But my students are paying, <laughs> so I don't feel able to hand this to you in the ex ex in the explicit form that I've given it to them in this time that they're out from the studio. So um, I'll consider that if someone wants to have the underlying information, all the words I'm using right now, and the explicit uh, explanation in, in, in writing, okay? Uh, just be in touch, okay? But, um, but the, by the end of a start, though, uh, what you want to have at the minimum, right, is this, uh, or even this, but, uh, and the rightness of all the relationships should show, this should actually feel like her proportions, her color scheme, her great forms, uh, and those of the entire ensemble, and the whole thing should be playing. By the time you, even before this, you should be feeling the color, the green color, and it's danced through the picture. You should be seeing the beauty of that, or the oranges, and however they play through the picture. Those th and it's not we're doing anything self-consciously. We just, when you're there, do it, right? But, uh, but the ensemble is the, or this, this thing is about the grouping, the ensemble idea is about the, the several groups of things. Um, so I say groups, okay? Form, uh, silhouette, light effect, uh, shape, proportion. All these things, are the, these are the groups of things. And so color, chroma, value, uh, even the word exits, you know, you see the Boston School guys that I've showed you before, you can see the, how careful they are about putting these exits in there because that's what you have to do if you're working through a viewfinder. Okay. All right, well, there are probably more questions, but I'm giving this to, I gave this to Norma, and then what happened was she came back uh, with her questions with a statement. Here she says, here's a picture of the setup and my first shot at setting up the color palette. I'm going to show you that and I'll go back to this writing. There it is. She sent, she sent this. And if you're going to do this with me, you need to set it up like this, okay? You need to say, all right, I need to set this up so the, 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 the palette I'm painting, I'm sorry, the, the board I'm painting on is in the same light as the setup. And you need to send me a shot like this, and then you can send me progressively uh, other shots. Ideally, you know, you do them side by side as you're developing here for your sake and mine. Um, but this is a reasonably good uh, view of this, but let's... I mean, you know, what she's done here. So let's, um, let's finish this up. So this is, this is set up in a north window in the morning. The pedestal has a nice, cool blue going on. It's a blue-green painting. She says that the pedestal has a nice blue going on, and I think it strongly influenced her. It looks like the blue is far less blue in relation to other things than she thinks. So you'll see how I mean that. But watch out for using names for, this is a blue pedestal. I wouldn't say a word just when it's in a setting. It, it, it can play a different role. You'd be very surprised, especially neutrals, lights, blacks, grays. Uh, so, uh, so it's a blue-green painting with focal area of yellow-orange. I'm sharing my thoughts as I was doing this and have a question at the end. Uh, I kept in mind that I needed to get the colors and the values and placement right to each other. I placed the colors on the canvas, then adjusted them. Uh, <laughs> Um, lightening some, darkening others. That is exactly what you ought to be doing. Though it's just setting up the color, I was concerned that I would put dark where it shouldn't be, and that was that worry I talk about, where you're worried that if you put a dark down where the light's going to go, uh, you're going to have to paint over a light with a dark, which is a, very much a no-no. So you'll find that you, you can rag those things off in the start if you really get desperate. But I suggest you keep your darks too small, and you can make your lights a little expansive if you want. It, but don't don't do it the other way. Don't make your darks too big. Uh, the other thing I found challenging was to get the color shifts into the masses, i.e., dark parts of the masses. Again, I was concerned about getting the lights dirty. Okay, so let's see how Norma did. So here's Norma's setting, and I'll come back to that again. I think in a in a few minutes. But I want you to see what I'm trying to get people to do in here. Now, first of all. Uh, she set this to me with a different cropping, and so I've helped her with the cropping. Um, this is what she's. This is what we're working from. We're making the assumption that this is her cropping based on the size of her canvas, right? This has to be exactly the same size proportions. It doesn't have to be the same size. It has to be the same proportions, okay? 
and uh, and the placement of this thing is one of the key things. Like putting that right smack in the middle, if it's where if that's where you want it, uh, just make sure that you're aware of that when you do this. Right. That's what I was talking about earlier with the placement um, uh, left and right. Uh, so you want this to be in the right place, left and right, top and bottom too. Now she's not working on establishing top and bottom or those left and rights yet. She's just in color. So we'll get out of this in a few seconds and then you guys can follow up with whatever you want to do or and we'll follow up with, with Norma in another video, okay? But here we are. Let's just go back for a second. So I'm just going to show you these things. So here she's got color notes, right? Presumably. So she's got the orange and that looks like a pretty plausible uh, version of this orange. And you know, a lot of people just look right at the orange and paint the orange. Well, eventually that's not good enough. Eventually you have to be looking at the other things to get the orange. Very important to understand that concept. The one thing she has going on that's good and putting the orange down is that she, it actually has a feeling of a value movement. It looks like she's thought about shadows and things, which is a big mistake. We don't do that. We just think about color and color movement or value movement. So there's a sense of form though that she has, which is exactly what, precisely what you would like to suggest if there is such a thing in a movement. On the other hand, this is a place where it's clear that the darks are getting way too big. You don't need that much. She just needs to, here you spot a color like say that color and you spot some other color there and you just let them run on and that, make sure there's a movement value to, value to other value and make sure it's too small because that's one of the, it's not one of the darker areas, right? Uh, or I should say because it is one of the darker areas in this setting. It's one of the, this, this is the darkest thing. So make sure this is too small and if anything, too far to the right. Now, she set up the yellows. They, you can see the yellows need to now be oranger. They, she has something going on there. Based on this, by the way, I'm just basing it on what she says. Let's pretend that it's exactly the same. If you were doing this in the studio and these, these were matching, and if you send me something, you can make the same judgment. You'll say, uh, but Paul, that wasn't the way it looked in the studio. But what you're sending me, I'm just treating it as if I were say, if, as if it were, just to see if we can make this thing work, okay? So, uh, so, so she's under her, 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 her yellow here, but she needs to now put some time into adjusting it more toward the orange side, right? And we are talking like Monet about the larger color. I don't care about all these little things happening inside here. I want this note, so to speak, right? Uh, and uh, the same with all these colors. We're not looking for this and this and this and this. We're looking for the larger note. Now, so she's put that down, that larger note, that looks fairly plausible. These, all three of these are fairly plausible. Their values look fairly plausible to each other. And she's learned to want to anticipate what's going to happen where these two meet. Uh, will they value be dark enough and this one light enough? Now, in this case, she's starting to get too light because the color quality is going out the window. Uh, and that's one of those things I'm warning you about. So if this is too close to this in value, it can't, the closer it gets to this, the less color it has, less color quality. So you don't need to be, you surprise yourself. You don't need to be anywhere near white with, with these kinds of lights. Not normally, not typically. So now I don't know what this one represents. I'm guessing it's this. And you can see that she's way off in color if that's what it is. That should be a red, right? As it were. It's not in the blue family. And this one here, actually, relative in this picture, is also, rel rel relatively speaking, over toward the reds. Certainly more than she said, but toward the yellow side in the case of what she's done here. So she's picked a blue. She's got a bunch of work to do with this, and she's got a bunch of work to do with this. Now, in this case, this is kind of starting to grow kind of big. If you're going to have a light sitting in here, you don't want to be doing that. Keep this relatively small. It can be isolated. Leave the whites of the canvas too big. You're much safer that way for the short term. This color then as, is, the, is, is too warm, isn't it? It needs to go through the blue cycle. So you've got to go through this thing and do more red, more yellow, more blue. And, and now, again, depending on where you're talking about down here, it could very well be, it looks like it is, darker than this one. And this is the class of what's my dark is dark, right? So somewhere in here, that would be one you'd want to know in the start if it shows in this painting. So I think that's right in the corner here. That'd be your dark is dark. And you got to go through red, yellow, and blue after that, after you get it right to, the, to all the other darks. So, uh, and, and the, the last thing is you don't actually have your lightest light. I think this is your lightest light and you actually haven't given me anything there. So the, this lightest light should be a color, okay? So it has to be darker than the white of the canvas. One more time, I'm going to say that, which forces this one probably to be a little bit darker yet than that, right? So get that one to be a real color. And again, it's not a blue. It's got, and I, we don't care about color. You just, after you've set them up there, you say, should this one have more red, yellow, or blue? Do it systematically, okay? Do it every time. Should have more chroma or less chroma. Should be darker or lighter in relation, in relation, in relation to something, okay? Okay, so that's part number one and. If you all can do this, that'd be great. And if you send them to me, I mean, you'll probably kill me with overwhelming me with this stuff, but, but I'd be very pleased to look at it. 
think big thoughts. One of the things that she was doing when she did the for me thing here, which is very good, that, that rounding movement of value from darker to a lighter, she, and she started doing it rather here, but this thing holds right through here, holds a really interesting different note that would be worth using. Don't be looking at all these darks and little things, which she didn't, but get this note here, this larger one to feel good, you know, and to do what it does to all these other notes. If you think of this as an object, even for a second, or if you know, the, if you call it a color name, even for a second, you will be lost. But it's not a color, it's a set of colors. And we're listening for how they play to each other, right? Okay, I think that's all I can tell you. So good luck with this, anybody who wants to play along. Uh, understand what I'm really looking for is for you to come back with a series of these, not just one shot like this, but a series of these that get you all the way to some point at which you've got the color canvas covered and some and, and, and the larger elements, the major aspects of drawing well set, okay? Okay, <laughs> good luck with that. I'm not sure that's what you're looking for, but it's a lot closer to what you're looking for than all these conversations about beauty, which I think I'm gonna do next, because <laughs> I got a very good beauty question. So uh, stay tuned for these things. This is called Norma's Crit for a good reason, right? And uh, you guys can uh, 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 have your name on in lights here. <laughs> I'll give you a crit. I'll give you an online crit if I can if I can see this value that I can bring to everybody else. But do these experiments. I'm just actually literally showing you a method, okay? So the sort of a how to paint a portrait. I I don't know that game, but but this is the visual impression. This is called how to set up the visual impression, if it's got a name at all, okay? And uh, you'll see that this is a holistic world. It's full color, full drawing form, uh, design, all these things happening simultaneously. This is the holistic way to approach painting. And I hope you'll see that the, 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 way, the, the, the holistic, the need to be holistic has within it requirements about how, how best to approach it. And this is so far as what I found in my long uh, <laughs> education. And so anyway, thank you and, um, and uh, do take care and do well in the things you're uh, endeavoring to do and stay well. All right, next time.